the incomparable Larry Hagman. First off, Larry, thanks for spending time with us this morning. I've never been called incomparable before. <laughs> I really? didn't know what it means. Well, it means that there's no one else like you, not only in... <laughs> oh, oh, I like that. Well, okay. Well, then we'll stick with it. Though. Okay. I won't even edit it out. It'll be All fabulous. Right. <laughs> um, tell me a little bit about when you were first reading for the role of J.R. Ewing. Uh, I didn't read for it. I just got it. They, they just said, we, we got this part for you, Larry. Here you go. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, Made it a lot easier. Is there one thing that stands out in your career that you haven't had a chance to do yet? Well, because you're 29 years old and you've got your entire career ahead of you, my love. That's a good question. You know what? I cannot wait to hear the answer to this question. This is, this is why I love Texas. <laughs> is there a role that you have not had a chance to play yet that you look, you're looking forward to in your next movie? I've never been asked that question. I don't, I think I've covered all the bases. There's a phenomenal passage in the book where you're speaking about reading to your father in one of the final moments of his life. And in a fantastic book overall, how emotional was that for you to actually either dictate that or put that on paper for the first time? Extremely emotional. Actually, I don't think the memo, the memoir ever would have happened if it hadn't been for that moment with my dad. He was 88, I was about 56, I think. He was taking care of him as an old man. And uh, he was a man of the theater. Uh, I grew up doing Shakespeare for my dad. Uh, and it was just such an intense moment where it just kind of crystallized everything I think and feel about what I do. There, there are a lot of people who are saying, you know, John Hughes, John Hughes, John Hughes, when talking about the movie, yeah. but I, kept getting a vibe from Savage Steve Holland with um, One Crazy Summer yeah, 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 yeah. Or, or, you know, Better Off Dead. Man, and I love, the, I love these, these interviews. These are great because they're so specific as to, you're absolutely right. And like, <laughs> a lot of these interviews when it's like, I was saying that for like Entertainment Tonight or whatever, which I love. <laughs> love Entertainment Tonight. The Rock the Bells tour is underway. There's the blow up backstage prior to the gig. They, they finish up the gig and you, you chose that aftermath right to open the film it right. was all, it, it, it's it's almost like as a, as a narrative filmmaker yeah. you've shown the bomb already gone off yeah, and this yeah. is how it got planted yeah. before did you realize you know at that point when you're back in the room with Q-tip that what no matter what happens from this point forward this is you know this is an amazing story i i did realize you know it, it, when when i was witness with the camera to some of the stuff that was was going on with the group that it was going to be an amazing story. I re also realized that I had no excuses not to finish the film because all the ingredients were right there. What they accomplished musically, they had already done that. And, and documenting and articulating that was, I'll say, the easy part. What did you learn from working with Catherine Bigelow? Um, she, she kicked my ass. That's what <laughs> she truly... She <laughs> She, she, she's, a, she's tough, man. She, look at her. She's a t Amazon. And she physically beat me up. She, she, but she, she taught me a lot. She, ta she, uh, she put me through the ringer, and it was all for, uh, and it's all on screen. So I think it made it made it worthwhile. Jeremy Renner says you kicked his ass during the production of this film to every single person who will listen on this red carpet. What did you do to that poor man? Oh. oh. Um, <laughs> it was a fairly uh, a fairly challenging shoot, but but uh, I think he loved it as well. But you know, we were in the Middle East in the summer, and and uh, we had to shoot a lot. Of, we shot 200 hours in 44 days, so it was um, a lot of material. And um, but he was there for us, so it, and it gave it an extraordinary performance. So we're really fortunate. <laughs> Where is Hagman? Come on, Hag Hagman. You, you, Hagman you missed him like about an hour, but the, the great thing with Hagman is he was in the full Texas regalia oh. with the hat and oh, yeah. all of it, and he, you know, even living out in California, he still has that persona to roll. Oh yeah, uh, believe me, I have been with Larry when he's worn a bishop's, uh, <laughs> the full stuff, all the, and the big pointed hat. The whole oh yeah. Thing. <laughs> But, but classic Texas, though. That's the great thing about yeah, it. Yeah, he was born in Texas. Absolutely. Yeah, out in Weatherford. Well, born in Fort Worth, grew up in Weatherford. Weatherford, yeah. So, yeah. 